Um, all right, Brian. Uh, I have a question for you. Yeah. Why should you never fight destiny? Uh, I don't know. Give give me the answer. Because then you'll have to fight the bouncers and every other stripper in the club. Well, Connor, that's uh, that's not really that funny. But uh, that's okay, because the reason I'm sitting here dressed as a 70s porn director in your video is because I, I initially came here because, you know, it's been a while since I've had a platform to speak anything about. And I came here, I was going to make a joke about Tom Vance and then vo voice my disapproval, you know? And then I realized two things. A, that would probably be not particularly sensitive. And B, I just can't complete the look without the mustache, man. It doesn't work. The joke would fall flat. Yeah. I think that would be too soon. Yeah. A little too soon. Yep, and that's why I have not uh, edited it out at all. <laughs> all right. Anyway, so we're here. I'm going to take do... these sunglasses off now. <laughs> <laughs> we're here to watch Destiny of the Daleks. For me, it'll be the first time. I'm aware that, Brian, you are a fan of this story. I do like this story. I'm alternatively here because JNT is on the crew of this story, and that's why I'm dressed like this. Right, that's slightly less creepy. Uh, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Actually, probably not. I mean, it is JNT, so... Ugh, mm -hmm. oof. Anyway. So, um, yeah, we're here to do Destiny of the Daleks for the uh, quote-unquote worst of Classic series, despite the fact that I like most of the stories. In fact, almost all of them in this series. <laughs> um... I don't imagine you'll like this one. I really like this one, though. I can't explain why I like it. I have a, I have a feeling this could go either way, based on what I've heard about it. Don't we'll expect see. Genesis of the Daleks again. I'm not expecting Genesis of the Daleks. Anyway, so, uh, okay. spoiler warning to anyone, because quite often in these videos we talk about stories that I have seen. I've seen all of New Who and most of Classic Who, so just be, bear that in mind. Leave a comment for a episode for us to defend against Hellbent. We like to do that at the end of these videos. Uh, the one that we do today uh, will be... I'm not, I'm not even sure if it will be interesting, but it's certainly one that's worth doing. Uh, and on this list on screen, we have the ones that I've done so far. And I believe at this point of uh, recording, I will have done all of the 70s and 60s by the end of this video. But by the time it comes out, it won't be all of them because I'm doing them backwards because I'm... T it's, it's confusing. But Destiny of the Daleks is there. Uh, and by the time we finish all of these on the list, it will unlock Dimensions and Time at the bottom, which will be the finale of this Worst of Classic Who series, which I'm sure will be a bundle of uh, interest. <laughs> Anything else you want to say before we crack into this story, Brian? Uh, Tom Vance is a bitch and I don't like him. Um, also... Now nah, I'll save that for later. Okay. Um, yeah, fun fact, this is a, uh, technically considering how I've been recording this, Destiny of the Daleks is the last Tom Baker story I haven't seen, and it's the last 70s story I haven't seen. So you, uh, you have the honor of being here while I complete this error. Ha <laughs> ha Lovely. <laughs> oh, this is the regeneration scene, isn't it? Yeah, the Romana regeneration scene. The infamous one. Hmm. I have to say, uh, everyone watching right now, that Connor always does this at, like, dinner time for some of us Yanks, so. So she committed suicide so she could change her shape. That's what I like to think <laughs> that throughout this entire scene. Ramon is just going back into the back room and slitting her wrists also, constantly. Also, it's... It, oh, oh, my God. Also, it's also like... It's like Mary Tam is like... <laughs> it's like, um, bloody... It's like Mary Tam. I know you may sin for Lala Ward, but you did not need to regenerate. You are hot just as you are. <laughs> he was thinking about it for a second. He was thinking about it. Not God, that sounds even worse the way I'm dressed. Jesus Christ. Too tall, take it away. That is a very tall woman. 
Ah, but it's nice to get them right, though, isn't it? Ah, but it's Exactly. Well, they had to find a way to recast Romana, and I think this was about as good as it could get. I can't- I just can't believe that Romana necked herself just to look like something else. Maybe she, because she's higher qualified on Gallifrey, she doesn't have limitations, like it doesn't cost her a life to do that? Clay, you're starting to do that thing that I don't like, where you're thinking like a writer. Just don't pay- don't worry about it, I'm man. thinking it's for just, the writer more like. <laughs> it's- it's just- it's just fucking funny, is all it needs to be. Mm. It's funny, in a, user, a universe this big, it seems to go back to the same places quite a lot. I like how she's got a long scarf too. I really like Feminine her one version. from, uh, I really like her State of Decay one. And I really like her Sharda one. I, I like this sort of pink, effeminate version of the fourth Doctor's outfit. Oh, you're a six, as you saying she's a girl, she has to wear pink. <laughs> sure. God, I thought he was, he was going to bash her on the head for that. It does suit her sort of, like, rosy look, you know? I'll give you three guesses as to what planet this is. Scaro, Exelon... Earth. Quicksand, isn't it? Or is it just an earthquake? Wow. Whatever planet it is, quake. Underworld dentist. Come on. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> Underworld dentist. A lot of people think this first part is really boring. But yeah, well a, lot really of, well, a lot of people think that a lot of things are boring, and they're wrong. Well, I think this, I think this one's kind of tense because, like, there's this creepy burial thing going on here. It's a sort of rumbling like, as well. You don't know what the, f huh? There's a rumbling as well. Rumbling, and like you don't know where the fuck they are, and you don't I'm, know. Yeah, what's I'm, going I'm in suspense. On. I'm in suspense. I want to know what's happening. I'm really, really excited. Even though it doesn't look like it, because well, I'm like, don't. Don't get too excited, but... Oh, no, I know, I know. You know. That's cool. Don't worry, but you... Whoa! Get a real... You get a real was... sense for how, like... I thought he was gonna slide down like a sand dune. Oh. How everything connects on this planet. Oh, okay. They're getting bombed. Oh, no! <laughs> Motherfuckers being crushed by this giant bit of architecture. He just pulls out a book. Oh, here we go, a bit of Lala Ward's signature, like, we call it orgasmic terror. Because <laughs> she's like, oh, no, uh oh. Oh, is that a cell phone? <laughs> is she bloody Kim Possible? What is he having? What is that? Is that a bloody... <laughs> is that like an inflammatory or something? <laughs> I'm being crushed by architecture, I'll take a painkiller. <laughs> Ah, the Mavellans. <laughs> ah! I'm not. Oh my god, what the hell? Whoa, that was a loud scream. Oh my goodness, what the fuck? Action replays? Is that multiple pits? I don't, I, I... <laughs> anyway. That was interesting. Speaking of... Speaking of pits, you should go listen to the Security Kitchen production adaptation of The Pit. Yes, we both appear in that. I believe the planet is called Scar. Ah, well I was right. Scar? The first time. Oh. Ah, hello there. Oh, this is the cliffhanger that Dylan hates. <laughs> Do not move. <laughs> <laughs> See, that cliffhanger used to scare the shit out of me when I was little. Like, the Dalek comes bursting through that wall and I, I, I shat my pants, bro. Mm. I was like, um, Whoa! Okay, that was, you know... That was decent. I liked it. I don't have much to yeah, say about it. 
I don't know much to say I about mean, it because not a lot yeah. happened. But it was a good build up. I I liked the sort of blocking off the TARDIS, Doctor being crushed. Some of the comedy was decent. The Mavellan introduction, yep, we found out at Scarrow. Then there's the Daleks. There's that thing where she gets pushed down into the thing. Like, it's not very eventful, but it was. You know, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I guess. Strap in, brother. Strap in. I imagine this is where the the memes begin. Is the next episode. I'm trying to be careful, Connor. There's white stuff coming out from between my buns. <laughs> God. Brian Hardo too. <laughs> it is my goal, Connor. You're, my goal you're, ru- you're, 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 you're ruining my video just like I ruined Joey's video. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bloody robots of death commentary. Because it was funny, when me and Mason were watching Armageddon Factor... I ruined everything. When me and Mason were watching Armageddon Factor... I ruined Factor, everything, just like how I ruined pussy. Um, me and Mason, when we were watching Armageddon Factor, I was like, oh, Mary Tam's really beautiful, and he's just like, no, no, stop, stop. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay, it'll end there. I'm not turning this into the Robots of Death commentary. Oh, he got so They're close. too bumpy for me. Is this the one where they hit the side? He he, he was grabbing go, his yeah. cock the entire time. These Mavellans look like they go to the gym. Oh, that's a great bit of acting there from Tom. As we are watching this, I want you to tell me what you think is wrong with these Daleks. They're a bit like... Just pay attention. They're a bit tatty? Just pay attention to their backs. Oh, they're broken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe they're in, maybe in the middle. Of, maybe they're in the middle of a war. Oh, also, this is the last Dalek story I haven't seen either. That's another thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you sure know how to? Look, that one has duct tape on it. Ah. I didn't notice that one before. We're gonna call him Ducky the Dalek. This 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 Mavellan is like a perfect blend of masculine and feminine. It's like it's a bit like Paul McGann actually. But a bit more cosmetic than Paul McGann, because Paul McGann's just naturally like that. It's alright. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not hating it. I'm entertained. It's not particularly deep so far, though. Good. Like, you know, it's a bit, mm. it's a bit basic. Are the Mavellans just, like, hair? Is it just the, like, painted on swampy hair? What do you mean? Because the Swampies and Power of Kroll are very similar hair to the Mavellans, but it's green instead of silver. I don't know. It's a bit more glamorous than the Swampy hair. Curry sauce. All over your anus. Delicious. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that the other day. Curry sauce all over your anus. <laughs> Out of context, it sounds like he's saying curry sauce all over your asshole. But I think, because I'm not sure what the full commercial is, but I think, in context, he probably means Uranus like the planet. Mm. Yeah, but I think that it's meant to be a play on your anus, though. I like how Roy Skelton sounds like he's going to run into breath when he does the Dalek voices. Who do you prefer out of Roy Skelton and Peter Hawkins? Depends. Sometimes Roy Skelton gives a really good performance, and when it's really yeah. good, it is really fucking good. Mm. But Peter Hawkins is more consistent. Consistent? Yeah. yeah, Peter Hawkins is always good, whereas Roy Skelton, when he's on, it's, like, amazing. Like the, like the end of Genesis of the Daleks, that speech is so good. But then you get Roy Skelton's, like, uh, Revelation of the Daleks. Mm. I think the Where best the of, voices are I just think, fucked. I think the best of all worlds is just Nick Briggs' one. I mean, it's it's a cliche to say it, but Nick Briggs' Dalek voice is just so perfect. My favorite Dalek voice actor is actually Michael Wisher from the Pertwee ones. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I forgot. I always forget he does the Dalek voices before Genesis. Because if you, because if you listen to Wisher and compare it to what Briggs does, 
and combine the fact that Briggs mm. also worked a lot with Michael Wisher before he died. Mm. It's clear to me that what Briggs is doing is an impression of Michael Wisher. <laughs> mm. I think he blends like bits he likes together and sort of has this version that is like his fan favorite. If that makes sense. But I yeah. I love Nick, Nicholas Briggs like adds so much character to their voice. Like he gives them that sass. If you know what I mean. That is true. The rest of them. The rest of them do sort of just like go on like no other no other no other voice actor could have done that doomsday like bitch fight better than Briggs. <laughs> Four. Yeah. <laughs> you are better at dying. This is not war. This is pest control. The bitch fight of Canary Wharf. <laughs> Daleks have no concept of elegance. This is obvious. Making me sad because I like this yeah. story better than Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. Yeah, well, you're a hipster. <laughs> I also like Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. Good. Which, um... Is an opinion that will get me skewered when Dylan finds out. Well, no, Dylan doesn't hate it. He thinks it's okay. Really? Yeah, he thinks it's all right. Uh, it's just there's some bits in it he doesn't like. like he hates obviously he hates the beach scene, uh, and he's not into the whole like fan fiction Cybermen vs Dalek fight. But he, I know he's, I know he quite likes part one actually. But to be fair, he likes well, part one of most. To be stories. fair. If I were to do a Cyberman versus Daleks fight, I would probably make it a bit more um big. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the money but, that you provide for that budget, Brian. <laughs> but D D Dylan also just doesn't fucking like fan wanky stuff, so No, he doesn't. But I I think it's a good fan wank though. Like there's a way to do it where it actually makes a good story. As opposed to, you know, like, something like Asylum of the Daleks, where it's like, oh, there's every Dalek ever in it, even though there isn't. Well. I like the idea. This is one of the things Moffat came up with that I really like, is that the Cybermen are sort of inevitable. Mm. And if we go mm. with that through line, the Daleks are kind of just another version of the Cybermen, except for the people of Skaro. And I think maybe doing a Daleks versus Cybermen story where you explore that sort of commonality would be really interesting. Um, Brian, I'm enjoying yeah. this about as much as I'm enjoying that, like, pulp bit from Monster Peladon, if you know what I mean. Like, the half of Peladon that I wasn't like, as high on is where this story is at for me. Maybe slightly... Maybe not quite as exciting, but it's... I don't know. There's not much to the story so far. It's pretty, like... It's pretty standard, just sort of fun corridors, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's why I like it. It's... It's... Not really... You know, too sort of big or anything. It's not, like anything to really write home about i guess but it's sort of just nice fun stuff and i i like fun it's like people always say that terry nation has two types of dalek stories and like this is the second type i think whereas genesis is the first well the thing about this is this is barely even a terry nation script yeah it's mostly douglas adams isn't it yeah, Terry Nation wrote an outline and then basically chucked it at Douglas Adams. <laughs> Douglas Adams and is like, what Adams the hell do like, I do? <laughs> pretty much. He, he didn't have very long to finish it. No, he didn't. I think that's where that originates from what time lords being able to fake death because that that's, well, that's used happened a couple times well it's used before this story a lot 
Is it? Yeah. I can't remember used... when it's Tom used, Baker man. does it like Tom Baker does it so many times. In the Hinchcliffe era, especially. When is he why am I blanking on when he's done it then? He does it in Terror of the Zygons, I think. But does he explain it though? He he tells you that he stopped his hearts, yeah. Okay, well, he does it in Pyramids I've of Mars as well. Terror. He do, he does it in Pyramids of Mars in Part Four. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll go fuck myself then. I must be confusing it for. I first heard it from this story. I think in the Demons he's forced to do it, but like it's not his choice because he gets frozen, and then he wakes up and says Eureka! Yeah. <laughs> ah, here we go. So he's not dead. He... Nice. Wow, we're already halfway. Yep. Again, I don't have much to say. It was just corridors. That's all it was. It wasn't bad. It was just corridors. That's all it is. It's just schlock. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it. <clears throat> no. I think there was that one line just towards the end where he says I could have stopped it. Is that Is that a little bit disingenuous? Is that a little bit kind of me messing with Genesis? Could have stopped what? Cuz like he says oh he created the Daleks, I could have stopped him or something. And I'm like but you you chose not to. For a good reason. Hmm. Hmm. I'm. I'm. I'm not saying that's bad. It, it may just be him tossing up in his head all the time. Like, but the whole point of Genesis and the speech that he gives at the very end is that he did it for a reason. That out of all that evil, something good came out of it. Well, so I, I think. I, I think it also line. comes across mul multiple times in stories after Genesis that he regrets making that decision. So, I don't think it is disingenuous. I mean, mm. uh, quite a few people have already died in this story by this point. He's probably like, yeah, I could have stopped this. Shit. Mm. Not sure about that. I like where it well, ends up with the I mean, Time War, though. I will say, I do like how it ends up with him ha for forcing to do it again, but having to sacrifice the Time Wars to do so. I like that a lot. Uh, although, to be fair... Yeah, I, I think it's just sort, of, be, <laughs> just sort of... To be fair, though, Moffat retconned that. But, you know, it is what it is. I think that's sort of what the, the intent of that line probably is. It's like, ah... When he w was in the moment, he was like, oh, I can't do it, because good will come, come from the Daleks. And now he's just in this really gloomy, dire place where plenty of people have died already because yeah, of the Daleks. Yeah, I actually, to like, be fair, Shit. like, thinking about th decisions, oh, like, overthinking especially, like, just thinking about decisions you've made is, it's a natural thing to do. Sometimes you feel like it's your fault, and then you think about it again, you're like, actually, no, well, I, and, I, and I need to remind as myself we've I did it for a reason, yeah. As we've established, the Doctor feels like that constantly. So I, I don't think it's entirely out of character for him yeah. to say, I could have stopped this in reference to Well, yeah, to considering, considering he was on the brink anyway, it is natural that he would be going back and forth on what he th thinks, and it's... It, it, yeah, okay, I can see that. Now, this will be interesting, because I've never seen David Goodison's Davros before. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I'm it will... intrigued to see where this goes. You're right, it, it will be a little interesting. I've heard the people that hate Destiny say that this is this is the point where it falls off a cliff. Really? Yeah. People don't people don't really like David Gooderson as Davros? Well, I'm not sure if it's, if it's necessarily David Gooderson, but just in terms of the story, people say that like the people that really don't like Destiny and say that part three is where is where like the problems start. Hmm. So we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll like it. Who knows? Okay, then. That might be in reference to one line that's a little shit. Because then they seem to overblow. Everybody who doesn't like Destiny of the Daleks seems to overblow 
one specific line okay. from the episode. All right, then. Well, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't. We'll, we'll give it a go. I think the implication is that no matter what form he takes, the doctor has a vagina. Okay. Because think about it, right? His thing is, get in my box. <laughs> well, Jackie Tyler says he's got two penises. Jackie Tyler is wishful thinking because she's a sad woman who's middle-aged and can't get any dick. Well, she can. She just can't keep them. Hmm. Doesn't sound like that. I boss. actually really, really... <laughs> huh? He's hopping around. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> and that... Combined with the fact that the mask does not fit his face at all, I think that's what makes his performance really stellar. Because <laughs> he still gives a pretty decent performance without the voice changer. Yeah, I'm just talking about like I wish I, I, I wish there was I wish there was a voice changer though. So the thing I'm most interested to find out is why they didn't kill him in Genesis. That's what I want to know. They'll explain it. Due to irreversible inflation, Dr. What? Yes. Do you believe your puny efforts can change the course of destiny? Well, now he's got a voice changer. Well. The Mavellans don't have much personality, do they? No. But there's a reason for that. You'll see. Inevitable destruction. No, 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 no. We had that conversation last time we met. <laughs> oh, he's just putting it in his pocket. <laughs> oh okay I think I know where this is going now because I've seen the 80s Dalek stories and I have a funny feeling I know why he's still alive why do you think it's something to do with like the the Dalek race war maybe you'll see <laughs> If it's not clear by the end of the story, I will explain it to you. Okay. Me. I've got a hunch, though. I've got an insane theory. I don't know if it's true or not. But are the Mavellans on the ones me. that become the... Are the, are the Mavellans the Imperial Daleks? No. No. Sorry, or no. the... No. Whatever the other ones are called. I was just thinking, because they have no, that white costume, and I was thinking, are they like the white Daleks? <laughs> no. That is okay. really wrong. <laughs> All right then. Well, it was just. If theory. only it was that cool. Because <laughs> like they would end up mutating into the other Daleks, whereas these ones are the ones that Davros has. Oh no, hang on. The ones that Davros has, they're the Imperial Daleks, right? And then the ones that are against them are the Renegade Daleks. Or, or the Rebel Daleks. The ones Daleks? that I are, what are against. Yeah, right now there's only one race of Daleks, and that's the one that Davros created in Genesis. Okay. <laughs> like the guy just did his eyebrows up. He's like, "Yeah, we survived." Happy about that. <laughs> I didn't. Need... That guy's wearing a draco. Cheers, bro. <laughs> Cheers, bro. We survived. Tom Baker is actually really good in this story. It's probably the highlight. I hate this, like, really weird take that Tom Baker's performances in his late run aren't good, because I disagree with that so much. I think he's great almost all the way through. Even, yeah, in all of it. It seems like there's also, like, a divisive take. It's either you hate Williams Tom or you hate Season 18 Tom, and I'm like, no, no, they're both great. They're just different. <laughs> I can see what you mean by low production values, though. This is very bare bones. I think for what it is, it's really good, though. It doesn't have a sparkle to it, if you know what I mean. Wait, did that Dalek just do that... a shrug? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. What is that? Hmm. Ugh. <laughs> we just fucking... Ch 
shot it. <laughs> I don't remember that scene. He's, it's basically like throwing a Nazi that was... fetus against a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I really like this location, actually. That's probably <laughs> one of my favorite things about the story is the location. See, that's what I was saying earlier. It reminds me of a map um, on a game called Brute Force called Estuary. What? <laughs> what? Hot potato with the gun? What is happening? Why is she doing a dance? It, do, they, do they get dizzy really easily? Looks like that's a ah. EMP. This looks like a big bong. It's like a contained nuclear explosion, so it's a really nasty one, too. Oh, dear. That's fucking brutal. What did you think of that episode? Um, the Davros scenes were good. Tom Baker's performance is really good. The location stuff's really good. Apart from that, it's just schlock. I don't- I don't have Enjoyment much- Enjoyment level? It's fine. I don't have much to say. It's just fine. <laughs> It's it's just a fine. Do you hate it as much as everybody else that does? A... Well, have we have they talked about the Daleks being robots at all? Because I know that's meant to be in the story, right? Uh, that it that is one line, and it in context it sort of makes sense, and I will explain why. Is it, it is it in part four? Probably. It's a bunch of set pieces, and there's some good Genesis catch up. The, ch the sets look cheap, but the location looks great. Tom's performance is fantastic. David Good Goodison is fine. Probably needs a bit more of a voice changer. Uh, the Mavellans are, like, really flat, but I th I suppose there's a point to it. I like their costumes. Romana's all good. Like, it's it's just... I don't know. I don't have much to say about it. It's just schlock. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. It's not one I can really review. It's just something that you watch, and it happens. Yeah. I don't feel strongly towards it. It's kind of... A, a lot of it's just sort of going in one ear and out of the other, if you know what I mean. Right. But I'm not I'm not disliking I it. I think it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's, a, it's a couple hours of just good Doctor Who for me, but everybody else disagrees. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not not enjoying it. I am enjoying it, but I'm not, like, I'm not loving it. <laughs> I'm just, it's just, it's just, yeah, it, <laughs> not just wobbly sets, but wobbly costumes. Ah, oh, this is the bit that Dylan hates, right? Yeah, that line right there, he says one race of robots fighting another, in reference to the Daleks versus the Mavellans. Mm. But here's the thing, the Daleks are literally programmed to act like robots, so like, the comparison still makes sense i think at least hmm well considering that they the showed a basically considering they showed a dalek mutant in this story it's not like terry nation would have forgotten yeah exactly the, um... i think that's an overreaction to say that the robots line is like you know assassination yeah it's it's People blow it out of proportion all the time. I, I think he's literally just saying, ah, one computer mind versus another. Mm. You could you could have rewritten that line Daleks to be a bit better. Do basically but it's operate. not it's not t it's not as bad as Dylan says it is. The meaning is clear to me. The meaning is clear to me. It's not clear to everyone else, I guess. But yeah, people treat it like there's an entire scene centered around how the doctor's like, ah, yes, the Daleks, the robots are nothing but robots. And that's not what it is. That's not true, because he picked up a bad Dalek mutant early in the story just before. <laughs> Scissors cut paper. We call it rock in New Zealand. But suppose we were two computers controlling two great battles. Each one working... We call it rock in America, too. Well, yeah, because the Dalek, even though it's an organism, it operates like a computer. Like, it, it can calculate, you know, combinations and all that. That's exactly what I just said. 
Yeah, like it's it's like a it's like a semi organism, semi piece of technology. That's the crux of the story, which I think the Daleks sort of just explained as well. They're in a stalemate with the Mavellans, and uh, mm. the, they go looking for Davros. Yeah, well, they're not, because they're not, because the Daleks, like, in a literal sense, aren't robots, but they think like robots from time to time when they're in a war, because they think logically and tactically, rather than emotionally. Exactly. So it makes sense. Whereas Davros, Davros thinks emotionally, so they think... He's the key to winning this war. Mm. Mm. And it wouldn't. And if they were actually robots, it wouldn't have taken him that long to make that realization. He's using a like a like an analogy. Yeah. The context was definitely an analogy, from what I saw. And everyone treats it like it's meant to be taken literally. Mm. So. Well, that happens a I lot in Doctor Who, and a lot of people are wrong. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've watched this story with Joey and I've pointed that out to him and he's like shut up Brian. Well that's just fucking I'm sorry you're wrong dude. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah well you know some people just don't like listening. Like remember when I tried to explain to them why I like Last of the Time Lords and they just were like no fuck off. It's like okay you obviously just don't like listening. Well, sort of like, that comes back to sometimes Joey and Dylan are really a hypocritical. I haven't called out Mason yet. I need to do that. Mason, it's really hard for me to call you out because you're probably the least problematic person I do videos with. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Fuck you generally for not being as problematic as I need you to be. Yeah, he's not an interesting character with a lot of depth. He's just a very plain, nice person. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> you shithead. Fucking McDonald. But, yeah, as I, as I was saying, jo <laughs> Joey and Dylan get hypocritical sometimes because one of the things that I uh, I didn't like about Caves of Androzani, still don't like about Caves of Androzani, and used it sort of as a scapegoat reason why I didn't like it, was the armadillo bat thing. Mm. And, uh... They gave me shit for that. Yet, here they are. And, like, one of their main reasons for not liking Destiny is... The Doctor says the Daleks are robots. It's like, fuck off, dude. I can just feel the sexual tension between these two. Even though they're playing Papers as Rock. They just Plot have, twist. They just have such a Tom symmetry. Baker has a vagina and Lala Ward has the dick in the relationship. Not gonna lie, I think the Mavellans would look good on a runway. I said this about the bloody Nymon as well. <laughs> just because they have long legs. Uh, uh, like, okay. I said um, the... I said, I said one, like the Kardashians should walk down the runway and as the Nymon, they should also do it as the Mavellans as well. <laughs> okay. I like this interpretive dancing. So the reason why they don't have much personality is because they're robots, right? Yeah, that's the reason. I think part of the issue with Dylan is sometimes he sees hard dialogue as statements about the story in a literal sense. That's why he often prefers storytelling that's subtle because then it doesn't, it doesn't f like impede on like a as like a statement on him. If that makes sense. Explain what you mean. So like him saying robots is like him thinking that the story is trying to say Daleks are robots. But if the storytelling was more subtle, then he wouldn't have that, and that's probably why he likes subtle storytelling more because it means he gets to make up his own mind about what's happening. But because when there's hard dialogue, it's like very direct. And then if someone makes a statement like robots, he thinks it takes it literally if it's a hard bit of dialogue. That's kind of my theory around Dylan. Hmm. And that's kind of like like going back to like so because, what I was saying before about like Last of the of Time Lords. Story... Like Dylan takes Last of the Time Lords in a very literal sense. Like he sees the Jesus imagery and just thinks the show thinks the Doctor is Jesus, even though that's not what's doing. If you know what I mean. 
Yeah. When it's when I I see, I like that master three parter, and I I kind of agree with Dylan's point there. But it, but like here here I don't get it. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm just rambling. I see. So this story's theme is all about left brain versus right brain. Or at least, in the case of Mavellans versus Daleks, it's one side of the brain versus one side of the brain that are the same. And therefore there's a direct, like, logical clash. Whereas the, the third party, which is the Doctor's party, it's the other side of the brain. Does that make sense? That's what I'm seeing yeah, here. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Right, now I've given myself a justification to actually like the story. <laughs> <laughs> it took fucking long, but here we are. I finally found it. <laughs> I will return. So is Davros ordering them to have bombs around them because the humans are sentimental? And so they will do what they say so they don't explode. Is that the idea? Um, I think the idea is Davros is thinking irrationally. <laughs> ah. He thinks by blowing up this one Mavellan ship, they'll have uh, made a giant power move right. on the Mavellans, And there's I no guess. way they can just throw the bombs at the ship rather than attach them to the Daleks. Yeah, it's not one of his finer plans. Hmm. Not <laughs> I love Roy Skelton. <laughs> <laughs> Do not move! <laughs> this is just kamikaze pilot thing. But is it really necessary? I don't know. Is kamikaze ever really necessary? No. <laughs> Although, well, it depends on the context, but not really, no. kamikaze is normally... The result of deranged minds, from what I know. Would you count Rose's actions in the series one finale as a kamikaze? Would I count what as a kamikaze? You know when Rose uh, absorbs the TARDIS energy with the the thing of, I could very well die, and I'm prepared to, to save the Doctor. Would you say that's a kamikaze? Yes. Mm. I mean, it's a failed kamikaze because she doesn't die. Well, well, no, it's not failed. It's it's more just um, the Doctor Kamikaze's for her so she can live. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And as you know, cheesy as it sounds, as much as people don't like it, it is a true sign of love. Well, also, the Doctor is on the brink of kamikazeing himself mm -hmm. <laughs> before the Emperor tells him not to. As yeah. Well. Yeah. What so are you, coward or killer? That is one of my favorite scenes in the show. Mm, I love it. And Eccleston is on point there. Oh, absolutely. Is this the first story where they shoot lasers, or is that before this? Is that Genesis? Um, Genesis they technically do, but like the negative effect is still the same as it is in like the 60s and Pertwee stories, where mm. it sort of takes up the entire screen. This mm. is the first one where the negative effect only surrounds the body. Like, this is, like, Destiny's the like first one where it's, the like... entire screen. Destiny's the first one that's, like, like the new Who effect, right? Oh, Pretty mud. much, yeah. I mean, obviously you don't get Whoa. skeletons, but... Whacked his arm off. I love the one where the controller gets shot and she says, I bring your destruction and her skeleton moves up. <laughs> the man who never would. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there's a lot of explosions. <laughs> Look at the little fucking snowflake. God, I love what is beautiful. Right, so this is how we get. S this is wh where we left off with them in resurrection. Yeah, so. 
stalemate happened um, after the Daleks lost Davros. They start losing the war because they're just like, well, what the fuck are we going to do? Stalemate mm. has to break at some point. And uh, by resurrection, the war's basically over and they want to use Davros to sort of strike back, I guess. And then that fails, as you know, because you've seen Resurrection. Mm. Oh my god, it's lifting the land. Or is it just lifting land? Well, yeah, it, dr got... it drilled into the ground. Oh, I see. When it landed. Well, I have made the odd mistake. <laughs> Right, okay, Brian. Uh, was it explained in the story yeah. how Davros survived Genesis of the Daleks? Yeah, it was. Okay, what what was it? Okay, so you know that scene where they sort of start getting into it, catching up a bit? Yeah. There's a bit where Davros talks about his life support systems and uh, how... They had a backup, and it basically took him some time to kick in. Like, a really long time because of the effect of the Dalek Okay, weapon. so, with that question, if he had a backup on hand, then why did he listen to the Doctor in Genesis and not trick him? Hmm? You said, you said he had a backup, right? He knew he had a backup back when Genesis happened, right? That's the idea? Well, the thing is, if you... Because that switches on his chair in Genesis is directly linked to his life support system as a whole. If you press that switch, that turns everything off. Oh, so, and, and, oh, I see, and, and also, like, I see, because, like, the backup would just, like, the doctor just wouldn't let the backup work. Okay, that's fine, then. I was just asking. Just in case. Yeah, the, the idea I get from big finish and everything is that switch just completely shuts his chair off the chair is the thing that keeps him alive right i can my see. guess is the explanation for why the chair isn't wrecked by the dalek weapon is he got shot in the chest i see and the backup recovered him Mhm. Mm all right that's reasonable it's not the best explanation but it's reasonable um Okay, then. So, my thoughts on this story. I don't hate it. I don't dislike it. Uh, it's not the best. I think a lot of it is just schlock. Which is, you know, some of it's enjoyable. My favourite thing about it, though... It, a lot of my favourite stuff about it actually interesting comes in the second half, which is weird, because most people tend to hate the second half more than the first. For me, the first, like, the first part was really, you know, intriguing. A lot of build-up. I think part two is probably the weakest in terms of like developing developing the plot, but that's only because it was mostly corridor schlock. Not to say that was bad, but it was enjoyable, but it wasn't like substantive, if that makes sense. And then in part three, a lot of it was also schlock, but it was also like you got that scene with the Doctor and Davros catching up, uh, and I did like that scene, and I thought Tom's performance was really good in that, and I liked the context of how they caught up. But I think. Where the story gets really interesting for me is part four, when they bring up the analogy of them having robot uh, thought patterns, which is not the same as what people say it is, which is just the Doctor straight up saying the Doctor, the Daleks are robots. It's not what he's saying. What he's actually saying is that there is a difference between being a left brain thinker and a right brain thinker. And he was assessing the fact that the Mavellans, because they were, they were like legitimately robots uh, designed to fight the Daleks. And the Daleks had thought patterns like robots, even though there are organisms inside them. They fight uh, with the same logical pattern on each side, and they use the analogy... Well, that's... They use the analogy of the rock, paper, scissors, or in this case it was paper, scissors, stone, or something like that. And so... Th if I could just... They decoded the... Add-on real yeah, go quick. Ahead, go ahead. The, the Daleks don't just think like robots. They're essentially... Basically, the, uh, the way... <laughs> The E, I say the EU. Um, basically, the way, the thing the show has me believing is the Daleks are essentially robots with an organic bit at the center, like the Davros systematically removed 
everything except the single-minded we must kill everything that isn't like us mm. that is essentially a robot right and so when you get the race it is, war it has like, been programmed I, i'm just gonna i'm just gonna ask because we do have like in the 80s we have the imperial versus renegade daleks i'm gonna imagine that the ones that aren't with davros are the ones that are more organic and less robotic Yeah. Okay, I like that idea then. Because the the issue with the Imperial Daleks is a, they're not evolved from original Khalid mutants anyway. Mm. So like they're already impure, and b, they've been programmed with two things in mind: kill everything that's not like us, and obey Davros. Right. Obey something that is. But like you what say, the original Daleks would see as inferior. But like you say, on a um, on a deeper level, Davros is trying to program them as robotic as possible because of what happened at Genesis when he got betrayed. I guess that's the idea, right? And so, yeah, if they have the least organic thoughts as possible, it means that Davros can control them. I think actually that works quite well. And so, because Davros made them so robotic, the Doctor was able to decode them against the Mavellans. Because if the Daleks weren't like that, he would have had to have a different plan, and if they were less robotic, and if they were more organic, like they usually are, especially with, um... Like, the Time War Daleks are very organic. Even though they still have the program to kill, they have a lot of... Like, they're very devious, well, and they have a lot of, um... personality. Especially the Cult of Skaro. So I kind of like this concept, actually, the fact that different Daleks are programmed different ways, some are more robotic, some are more organic. And it kind of goes back to that whole theme I was talking about before about left brain versus right brain. Yeah. All right. Well. The Daleks The Daleks in this story, I don't know if... Um, this derails anything you were implying. The Daleks in this story are the original Daleks. These aren't Imperial Daleks. Yeah, I know. I know that. But what I'm saying okay. is is that Just making sure. But what I'm saying is is that in Genesis of the Daleks, these same Daleks I imagine. Uh, uh, hang on, let me let me just double check. Davros coming back to life took control of those Daleks, right? Or was it the other way around? So the Daleks go on a search for Davros because he's an irrational creature that they hope can break the stalemate between their computer minds against the Mavellan computer minds, basically. Okay. They're hoping that his him being irrational is the key to breaking the stalemate. Right. And it does break the stalemate, just not in their favor. I see. So 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 you have this recurring theme from Destiny into Resurrection where the, da the original Daleks only ever bring Davros back when they need him and try to use him. I see. After his, he serves his purpose, they would toss him aside. And in Resurrection, Davros is pretty much like, I've had, a, I've had about a f enough of this fucking bullshit. I'm going to start over, and that leads into Revelation. So the idea is that the Daleks are at their most robotic and least organic at the start of the creation, and then they, they change over time. And as especially the ones that deviate from Davros, they become more organic and have more irrational thought and more personality. Which is kind of ironic, actually. Um, Is that the idea? Yeah, there's, there's some stuff in I would remembrance say, of the Daleks. I would, say the cult, I would say the cult of Skaro... I would say the cult. I would say the cult of Skaro are about as far from these Daleks as possible. Like they are the most organic, the most like imaginative. If you know what I mean. You've got a point there. Yeah. Um, mm. I think with the Imperial Daleks, because you also have to remember that the Imperial Daleks are an entirely different breed of Dalek from the ones in the new series. Anyway. Mm -hmm. um, the Imperial Daleks are more bionic than these original Daleks. And the the clash comes from that they're with the original Daleks is that uh, the Imperial Daleks are not Khalid descended. Okay. They're they're humans from other parts of the galaxy. They're not pure Daleks. 
and they obey Davros, which it's made clear in Genesis of the Daleks that because of the way Davros programmed the Daleks, the Daleks think Davros is inferior. So the mm. fact that there's another race of Daleks that claims to be really, re, really real Daleks, and they're obeying something that is inferior to the original Daleks, pisses them off a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, I've heard some people say that this story wrecks Genesis a bit. What what are they referring to when they say that? I have no fucking idea. Hmm. I'll be interested to have conversations with people about it, because I, I do genuinely want to know what they mean by that, because I don't see it myself. Because, like, if you, if you take a second and think about it, like, I, I know, it's a little hard to pay attention to some of the dialogue, because... The first two parts are a bit slow. Like, despite the fact that I like this story, I will admit it is slower than a lot of other Dalek stories. Um, if you actually pay attention, though, everything works pretty okay with Genesis. Like, I don't think anything directly contradicts it. Like, there's an explanation for why Davros is still alive. Um, you know... The Daleks aren't literally robots, as we've established, mm -hmm. so, like, I, I don't understand why people say that. And, like, it's, it's also clear that, you know, maybe the set doesn't look like the one from Genesis, because the, the implication here is that the place, the ruins that the Doctor and Ramana are exploring in the first two parts are the ruins of the Khaled Bunker. Mm -hmm. that we see in most of Genesis. And it it doesn't look like that, but other than that, I don't think... I don't think it wrecks anything from Genesis, other than the set design is n clearly not the same as it was in Genesis. Yeah, so like production errors rather than writing errors. Yeah. Okay, I feel like because you also have I, to. I feel like, I feel like you have to come feel, at it. From... I feel like I'm gonna hit. I'm, my ear is gonna get a lot of attack from Dylan for this, because I know he absolutely hates the story. Well, you've also got to come at it from the angle that Douglas Adams was a Doctor Who fan. He mm. was sort of the first Doctor Who fan who ever got a spot with the creative process of the show. Mm -hmm. So like, he knows what he's talking about. Like, there's. I, I've i watched this story multiple times just for fun. I I've There's nothing that directly contradicts Genesis of the Daleks in it. I don't, I don't get what people are saying here. It's okay. mostly just stuff they're either misinterpreting or not paying yeah. attention to. Um, how would you feel about the... Because I had, I had, I've heard a few takes about this story. How do you feel about people saying that um, even though it's justified that the, the Mavellans are robots and that's that's like part of the plot, people say that despite that, because they're so flat, that makes the story less fun to watch? Um, I would agree. Because the, the issue with the Mavellan thing is you don't learn that they're robots until like ass end of part three. Mm. Yeah. And they don't do a very good idea of establishing ooh there's something off with these people i think maybe you could have um i feel like boring well, as fuck. i feel like if i was there's a if i was uh, if i was editing this story i would have a lot of what happened in part three and part two and then have a lot of what happened in part four and part three and then just extend the ending and develop the theme a bit more rather than have like the schlock if you know what i mean yeah i think this story could definitely do with another draft Oh yeah, it's, I it's won't certainly, deny you that. It's certainly rushed, but it's rushed by writers that are very but good. But you also... Ha Most of the time. You also have to take into account that Terry Nation was commissioned to do a script, basically, and said, Haha, how about I just give you an outline instead mm. by the time his deadline came around? And so yeah. Douglas Adams has to be like, Fuck, fuck me. Okay, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta write a season opener and I do not have very much time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unlike some people, this is not my least favorite Terry Nation story. It's still the Android Invasion. 
the android invasion is my least favorite terry nation story as well mm. Mm. i like this more than the android invasion um but yeah i thought it was i thought it was fine i thought it was an all right story it wasn't like i didn't love it uh i but i and, Mike, and it's it's certainly my i guess it's it's not my least favorite devil story either that's still the magician's apprentice by far like Magician's Apprentice is way worse than this story for me. Even even if the production looks better, the the, the writing is just absolute dog shit for that story, in my opinion. Uh, whereas this, I actually think, is better than that story by quite a bit. Would you agree with me? Well, I'd agree because I think, despite you know, that second part of Destiny of the Daleks sticking out like a slow ass sore thumb, the script here, although not oh, like... I mean. Are you forgetting all the filler? Elegant and are you fancy. Forgetting, are you forgetting all the bloody filler in Magician's Apprentice with like the, like just going around to all these different planets and then you got the stupid planes in the sky scene and you got the doctor playing guitar and all that crap. Are you forgetting about all that? I, I don't like Magician's <laughs> Apprentice, and, which is familiar at all, but a lot mm. of people don't like this story more than magician's apprentice yeah, and cool. which is familiar and my my argument for that is magician's apprentice and which is familiar is incompetent and insulting whereas this one is competently written maybe not like it might be a little rough around the edges but mm. the, the ex, it doesn't really let me put it this way the do heart, anything the heart of the story really is do there. anything the heart of the story is there and it's in the right place it's just a bit rough around the edges like, the execution is a bit rough around the edges, whereas with something like Magician's Apprentice, the heart is actually in the wrong place from the start. And, like, I think people like it more because, obviously, you know, production values, but mainly because you have those scenes with Peter Capaldi and Julian Bleach, which are really well acted. But I think people tend to lose sight of the fact that those scenes actually mean nothing once you see the conclusion. At least, in my opinion, I feel that way about The Witch is Familiar. I think it, the a lot of the twists in the story ruin a lot of the things that could have been good. And, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Whereas, everything here sort of makes sense. Uh, I thought Tom Baker's performance was excellent. I thought he did a really good job. He was probably the standout. Uh, David Goodison, I don't dislike him, but I definitely think he's the weakest actor to play Davros compared to Michael Wisher, Terry Malloy, and Gillian Bleach. Um, I really like David Goodison as Davros. I mean, he's he's good, but, like, I don't have much to say about him, really. He's just sort of... He's like Michael Wisher, but less. That's kind of how I feel about him. I sort of like that he's a little less than Michael Wisher, though. Like, that... That's... I like a more, um... Obviously, I like Shouty Davros, but mm. I also like a more refined one as well. Yeah, but so I think David I think if, if they just if the vo nicely. if the voice changer was more consistent and it sounded more convincing, I think I, I, I wouldn't be as harsh. Like um, Michael Wisher plus David Gooderson, like if if you balanced them the two sort of portrayals out, you get Terry Malloy's Davros, well, and that's why I think yeah. Terry Malloy is sort of the best one. Terry Malloy is great. I think also Terry Malloy in Big Finish is very subtle. I, I really like his like soft Big Finish voice, even though it's not technically soft. But like the the way he speaks in Big Finish, like it's it's very it's very polished. If you know what I mean. Yeah. I love the little nuances in his voice changer as well, like the like the little crackles in his voice. Um, Romana. Uh, she was a bit of a damsel for some of it, but um, I thought she did all right. I wouldn't say she was great, but she was decent. She had a regeneration scene. That was quite funny. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't like that. I think it's really funny, do, and I sort of just take do it Do people what think it it's... Do, th do people think maybe it's a bit of female stereotyping because she's, like, trying on different, like, bodies? So the big complaint with that scene... It mostly comes from, like, nerdy neckbeards who don't know how to have a little bit of fun. Who are just like, well, well, how's she doing that? That doesn't... That's not how gen regeneration works. What the fuck? Is there actually, like, that's an EU the biggest explanation complaint for how it works, it. though? No. But I... I've watched... Oh, I can't remember what I watched. There was something... 
with the creators of the story, not maybe not the DVD special Adams. features. It was no, because I don't have the DVD. Okay, F fucking something I watched though had like people behind the scenes talking about how they did it. They literally did it just for the meme. Okay, <laughs> like it. It is just a gag. I can. I can. I can respect that. <laughs> <laughs> um, my interpretation like, of it is is that Ramana is much more higher educated than the Doctor, and so I think she has a lot more control over her regeneration. And it's like she she has a few like you know she has a bit of time to decide what she wants before she settles on a final form. The only part that I'm a bit like confused about is that did she decide to just kill herself to do that? <laughs> what I what I think is funny is it is that you have mary tam and mary tam's just like well i kind of had a lady boner for that princess i i want to look like her forever goes to kill herself and then the doctor's like nah dude you can't do that so she just keeps going back and slitting her wrists or like dying in a bunch of really gruesome ways while the doctor's just sitting there humming to himself would you um how would you fixing K9? how would you have felt if say like for example, like, Mary Tam had agreed to be in this episode to do the regeneration, right? How would you have felt if they had Mary Tam's Romana in this story, and then she got, like, I don't know, shot by a Dalek, and then the scene happens at the very end of the story? You'd lose the funny gag at the beginning. <laughs> That's how I... Yeah, you it. probably would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I think the gag I think the gag is what makes it. Yeah. I really like the gag. Yeah, cuz I cuz when I first saw the scene I was thinking like, oh, is this meant to be one of those jokes where it's like it's a woman trying on different clothes at a shop? Like that's what I was thinking it it was. You know what I mean? It I mean, that's probably what it is, but I I like I like the suicide joke better. <laughs> <laughs> God. Jesus. Oh dear. Um yeah, the uh, the Daleks they were fine. Uh, how be, how do we feel about the ending? How the way like Davros is like pushing down and the Doctor lets go and he hits the button. Because mm. a lot of people say that's really funny. I I think it is. <laughs> I like the way the Doctor just smiles and lets go because he knows what's about to happen. <laughs> yeah, you can't see me right now, but I'm doing a really creepy smile. <laughs> yeah, face. yeah, uh, no, I, I like it. Um, what about the the actual plan the... itself, though, to Kamikaze the Daleks? <sighs> okay. <laughs> My explanation for that is Davros has morning brain. He isn't thinking. He's been asleep for centuries. He just woke up. And the Daleks are like, okay, we're in the middle of this really complicated war with a really complicated stalemate. Davros just goes, I oh, don't know, why are you yelling at me? Go fuck off and blow yourselves up or some shit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why the Daleks' plan fails, because they wake him up and don't give him his coffee. God. <laughs> it is a bit silly. I mean, I love silly Doctor Who, but I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there's something about this one where I I almost wish it was slightly different. Whereas a lot of the other silly ones, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy that it is this silly. Um, As far as a sequel to Genesis of the Daleks, I think that's what most people dislike it. For. Oh, like, yeah, no, it pales in comparison. Funny, at, the, at, the funny thing is, is that the... I know a YouTuber called Cody W1 that prefers this story to Genesis of the Daleks. Ooh, I'm not sure if I'd go that far. I mean, I do like this story a lot, but I, I don't think I'd go that far. I mean, to be fair, he is one of those people where it's like, oh, the only thing that matters in a story is entertainment. And he finds Genesis I boring. I mean, I, ag I agree with him to a certain extent, but, like, not all the way. I'm, I'm definitely less objective than Callum. <laughs> but more than Cody W1. More than Cody W1. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, it's it's nowhere near as good as Genesis of the Daleks. No. Definitely not. Um, From both a subjective and an objective standpoint. 
Mm-hmm. Genesis of the Daleks is just more tightly written. Mm. Chill. And better performed, better production values all around. Like oh, Genesis, a, oh, of, the Genesis Daleks of the Daleks is the better of the two. Genesis stories. of the Daleks is one of my favorite Doctor Who stories. I mean, it's a cliche, and it's in my name and my channel for a reason. But man, it's so so good. It's yeah, amazing. There's a reason the channel's called Genesis of Androzani and not Destiny of Androzani, yeah. people. Yeah, not bloody, uh, I don't know, Destiny of Frontios? <laughs> Destiny of the Awakening. <laughs> Destiny of the Awakening. I want someone to name the channel Destiny of the Awakening now. That'd be, that'd be a oh, good laugh. Yeah. It would be a good laugh. Yeah. So I've seen every 70s story and every Tom Baker story now. Yeah. How do you feel? Accomplished, but I also, not going to lie, I kind of wish it was something else. I kind of wish I finished on a different story, but hey-ho, what can you do? I mean, yeah. my, so what's I mean your, my what's last... What's your final rating out of 10, my well, we're, we're not going to get to I that yet. To whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down. We're not to that yet. But I was just going to say... The thing I is... need to know. I might... It's been burning in the pit of my stomach no, 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 no. all the time. Look, man. you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait. <laughs> um, so, okay. in terms of this, how the story was received in the discontinuity guide, they said that the serial had a tacky, inconsequential feel that comes from a decade of having its best jokes sneered at. That's hurtful, man. Hmm. I mean, part of the issue is, like, I can despite the fact that I love this story, I can see where some people are coming from with uh, why they don't like it. Hmm. It's, it is really tacky. It is kind of rough around the edges as far as the script goes. Some of the performances are really wooden, like... There's a big episode where it's just running around corridors without anything happening. Mm. So it's kind of, it's Destiny of the Daleks is really hard for me to defend because, you know, on one hand, like you pay attention to some of the writing. It's really good. But also like some of that writing is also fucking terrible. And by the point you get to the good stuff, you're already tuned out because it's been nothing but shit for the first half. And it's just... I don't, I don't think it's that shit. I don't think it's that bad. It's... The first half is boring, is the issue. I don't think it's that boring. I think it's okay. It's serviceable. It is a, it is a very slow-to-start story. Is the issue, sure, I sure. Think. The substance of the plot takes a while to get going, but it's not terrible. Like the what they fill it in with in the first episode, especially, is all good. Second episode, not so much, but it's not. It's not the worst. Like it's fine. I think maybe what they should have done is they should have had, like I said, they should have had Davros appear at the end of part one, and they should have had part three be part two, and then they should have fleshed out part four as the like last two episodes. That's that's how I would have done it. Yeah, I've, I can't entirely disagree with the discontinuity guide assessment of it, though. It's it has all the problems that people, for the most part, say it has. I, I'm not sure where the oh it ruins Genesis or uh, oh the. Daleks or the doctor says the Daleks are robots thing comes from. Mm. Um, those are those are the only two things that confuse me because I I just don't see it I guess. But everything else I can sort of understand the criticism of. Mm. Uh, I can see why some people would find it boring. I can see why some people would not want to sit through it. I can see. Uh, the tacky set design, like, the Daleks are literally falling apart. There is duct tape where <laughs> wood should be on a Dalek. Yeah, they say, like, people are saying it looks shabby. And it certainly looks shabby in some bits. It, it sure. looks, it looks terrible. Like, there aren't a lot of Doctor Who stories I will actually be like, that looks fucking dog shit. Destiny of the Daleks looks like dog shit. <laughs> 
It didn't. It didn't. Whether it be like the really, the really bad '70s design. I don't that's think going it's. On I, don't think it's I don't think it's. I don't think it's as like ugly as the some shitty other Daleks. stories, though. I don't think it's as ugly as something like the Invasion of Time. Yeah, that's true. Um, but it's up there with the Invasion of Time in terms of ugliness. I think. It's fair. The invasion of time. Actually, is no. Ugly. I'm going to disagree with that because I think the location looks great. The location does look good. I will give it that. But like, everything else is kind of the shit. I mean, the main control room for the Daleks is just like. I mean the set. The set a design. B a blue floored BBC studio. The set design does kind of look like a junkyard, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. Yeah. Um, most other people are saying, like, David Goodison was lesser actor, the Daleks are robots, Romana's bizarre re regeneration. They're basically just saying all the things that people usually say. But they also said that... Um, Romana's regeneration works better if you literally just take it for what it is. A yeah. joke. But like, <laughs> is much, what I'm trying to... But pretty much is the everyone, point I'm trying to get but across. Everyone pretty much says, up, up, despite that, in spite of its flaws, it was clattering good fun. That's what they're all saying, basically. In spite of its flaws, it's good fun. Yeah, it's like entertainment. I have never seen anyone say it is good fun. Like, you were the first person. Well, I've seen three people have... in this in this like Wikipedia like review section say that despite its flaws, it's good fun. Really? Yeah. I've. I've legitimately never seen. Like honestly, before. I think that, I think that this like to me. in terms of the DWM ranking in 2014, this is one of the highest ranked ones because there's actually quite a few people that enjoy the story despite its issues. Huh. Wow. I I thought I was really in a giant minority. I I think well, I've only, only ever met. It's one only within like other the person it's only who within likes like the story as much it, as I do. It's only within this circle of like amino people that really hate the story. Like it's the really hardcore fans that don't like it. But the, you know, sort of more casual audience are more into it. Oh, well, I'm a hardcore fan and I like it. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you're special, Brian. I am a little special. <laughs> I'm I'm the king of shit opinions in our little friend group. Yeah, so this was apparently written by Terry Nation, but it's basically based off of an idea by Terry Nation and written by Douglas Adams is what it should be saying. Uh, right, but I think there's also this policy at the BBC at the time that prevents Douglas Adams from actually having his name on a script. Mm. Yeah, true. Like, I don't think City of Death... Well, that's why City of Death was is, David Agnew. Is, yeah. It's because he's the script editor. The script editor isn't allowed to also write a story, essentially. Mm. Even though Invasion of Time was also David Agnew, but that was Anthony Reid. <laughs> yeah. I think he was involved with some aspect of the creative process other than writing, though. So I think it's just sort of like, if you already work behind the scenes on a show... You're not allowed to write for the show. They should have done a pseudonym so. for, like, Impossible Planet and Satan Pit, and they should have done also a pseudonym for Nightmare and Silver, I think. Those two stories I think the been... only person who doesn't follow the pseudonym rule is Robert Holmes. Oh, no, no, because he does the bloody, um, Stephen Harris and Robin Bland. Oh, that's true. Yeah. He only... Well, I think the thing with, um... Brain of Morbius, though, is that was originally written by Terrence Dick. Yeah, and uh, Pyramids of Mars was written by someone else as well. And Robert Holmes went through and basically took an axe to each of those stories. Mm, yeah. Um, to the point where Terrence Dix didn't actually like the new version of well, the I Brain think, of I think, Morbius. Well, I think said, Terrence Dix said something basically along the lines said, of, um, He said that he didn't like it because he thought, well, why doesn't he just... Uh, put Morbius's brain on the Doctor's body is basically what he said. Yeah. And he said, please don't put my name on that because it's really bland. I think it would be funny if you had a uh, pseudonym 
the funny the, the word well, it's, fu- it's, it's funny though because the braid of morbius is actually quite popular <laughs> so it's funny how he said that. yeah like this backstage mess happened and then in the, in the end result people really liked it <laughs> or at least most terry nation most did not, people liked not it terry nation. it's a little bit divisive but most people like the brain of morbius most people do like the brain of morbius it's not my favorite from that season but it's okay yeah i like um, so what's i like sea to doom uh pyramids of mars and planet of evil more than brain of morbius Uh, I think my least favorite from that season is the Android Invasion. Yeah, same. Uh, it was Android... it's really the only bad one. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. For by far, like the, the the for me, the gap between Android Invasion and Zygons is absolutely huge. Like it's this just gulf of nothing between. Them. Actually, I don't like Zygons either. I always really? forget Zygons is in season. You you don't like yeah, I don't the like Zygons. Zygons. Oh, it's always it's nope. all the people. In I'm that... just not a huge fan of the Zygons in general. Well, it's it's all you people in your little group, like you and Joey and Dylan, don't like Terror of the Zygons, and I've never understood why. I think Matt Walters I'm is just, the same. I just, I'm just not entertained by it. I, I think it's boring. I've never understood that. I think it's amazing. I've I've just see I, i'm not a huge fan of like the duplicate body thing like i don't like the faceless ones either oh mate i love the faceless ones yeah pe- now that's one that joey dylan and all the people in my group shit on me for because mm. they <laughs> they're like oh how can you not like the faceless ones it's great i'm just like planes aren't scary <laughs> Oh dear. Um, this story was directed by Ken Grieve. I think most of his ca- um, camera work is fine. It's just the set. It's just the set. That's the problem. It's just the bloody set. It's so cheap. I agree. But his location filming is really good, actually. Oh yeah, no, it's it's great. Uh, music by Dudley Simpson. I didn't notice much of it, to be honest. I don't think there's a lot in here. There no, it's not really. There just isn't a lot of musical score yeah, for this it's one. Quite a, it's quite a cold story in terms of music. Which I think helps sort of sell that Scaro is a barren, desolate wasteland yeah. a bit better. Yes. Now, this story has quite a bit of trivia. Mm. So, um, one of Romana's costumes when she regenerates is Zildas from the Robots of Death. Oh, okay. Uh, Tim Barlow, who plays Tassan, was partially deaf, but could lip-read and ran a school for deaf actors. That's cool. Oh, okay. Is that the main guy with white hair? Probably. Sort of like the lead supporting character who isn't a Mavellan? Mm. Uh, this is Terry Nation's final script credit on Doctor Who. However, director Ken Greve claimed that 98% was written by Douglas Adams. Oh yes, what I know that is of course. Um, true. David Goodison had to wear Michael Wish's mask. That's like one of the big. Does things. not fit. Nope. Does not fit. <laughs> Apparently, a lot of the humor in this story is very similar to the Hitchhiker's Guide. It's like that kind of brand. Well, it's written by Douglas Adams, mm. so that makes sense. Of course, yeah. Apparently, this is the first story of Doctor Who to use a Steadicam. Uh, I don't know what a Steadicam is, because I'm illiterate. It's a rig used to obtain smooth, stable shots from a handheld camera. So it's like, so it doesn't wobble. Oh. Okay. I know, I know, cool. I know what it is. I've, I think I may have even used one. Oh, apparently the croak that K9 gives in the story is actually not David Briley, it's Roy Skelton. So David Briley's hmm. K9 doesn't appear until Creature from the Pit. Interesting. Because huh. he's not really in City of Death. I mean, they, they say his name, but he's not really in it. Oh, yes. Uh, Romano wears the same costume in that Doctor Who meets his match commercial. You know, the Prime Computer one? Ah, uh, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Clever Prime. It's funny, because that, that uh, ad ends with the Doctor proposing to marry her. It's funny, because they ended up getting married after season 18 in real life. Divorce is funny. Oh, apparently this is the first time since the Green Death since the 
stories, individual segments are called episode rather than part. Are they? Yeah. We were absolutely right. This is the least scored of all Dudley Simpsons. No episode has more than 90 seconds of music. Episode 4 has none at all. Wow. Much of the story was originally meant to take place at night, but the budget would not permit this kind of filming, so it had to be rewritten for the day. Apparently, Terry Nation was unhappy with Douglas Adams pointing out the Daleks' design flaws because it would make him less popular to the, to the viewing public. <laughs> okay. How dare you expose things about my creatures that are true. Here's, an, here's a very interesting bit of trivia. According to David Goodison, Tom Baker would never allow people to think the series was a joke and would reprimand actors he felt were out of order. I I, rem I remember this. I've there's this interview with a bunch of the people behind Davros on the Remembrance of the Daleks special edition, which I have because it's my favorite story. And uh, David Gooderson indeed does mention that. All right, Brian, this is the part you've been waiting for. Give your conclusion and rating out of ten for Destiny of the Daleks. Uh, I give Destiny of the Daleks, <sighs> if I'm being mean, a 6, if I'm being nice, a 7. So a 6.5? And that's like, I guess, I, I really like it, is the thing, despite that rating, like, the honest opinion is probably 7 out of 10 for me. So you want to give it a 7 overall? I want to give it a 7. Because I like it a lot. Okay. Uh, Destiny of the Daleks um, has a flawed production. It has a bit too much filler in part two. And the plot isn't the best. But I think it tackles some really interesting sort of ideas about left brain versus right brain. And the robots thing isn't as bad as people say. And the Genesis sequel thing isn't as bad as people say. And David Kudison, he's fine. He's all good. Tom Baker's performance is really good. I love the location filming. And it's just, it's a sort of fun, shocky story. It's its not, like, anything too special. But it's definitely not, like, I definitely wouldn't say it's, like, you know, a favorite or one that I would, you know, love to go back to or anything. I think it's just, I think it's all right. And I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. I think that's a fair score. Because it's not as bad as people say, but I also don't love it either. I have no qualms with your score. Because it's only 0.5 off from mine. Mm. Right. If so, I was Callum, I would give it a 6. Actually, if I was Callum, I'd probably or, uh, give it like a 2. Well, Callum gave it a 4.5 when he watched it. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Intriguing. Yeah, I can actually watch his reaction to it now, now that I've seen the story. That's true. Yeah. Um, anyway. Can't say I will. <laughs> it's alright. Anyway, so. It is now time for us to defend a New Who episode against Hellbent. And I'm not sure if I told you which one we're doing. Did I tell you? I can't remember. I don't think you did. We are doing the Battle of Ranscor Av Colos. Ooh, that one's going to be tricky dicky, because I've only seen it once, and I don't but, remember it. <laughs> but, well, Brian, just a question. Do you like it more than Hellbent? You know what? They're, they're kind of on the same level for me. Okay. Like, I will give Battle of Ran score Av Colos this. It's less insulting to the show's lure... I guess, but it's, I'd, I don't know which one I'd prefer to watch, is what I'm saying. It, I, I mean, I, guess. I will say, the Battle of Ranskorav Kolos is about as void of entertainment as you can kind of get in this show. It's so bland, so cardboard, so vapid. See, it's like, the two of them have they're like on equal playing fields, but it's for different reasons. So like, they kind of the I've extremes of um, they kind of like the extremes of Moffat and Chibnall in a way when you think about it. It's sort of um, mm, yeah, that's actually very true. Mm. Uh, I've said this before, and I'll probably say it again, but 
one of the things that a story can do to make me hate it is be boring, boring, boring all the way through. Hellbent is not boring all the way through. It, there are bits of it, there's a lot of it that is boring. But Battle of Ranskor Av Kolos is boring all the way through. And so I really don't like it. Um, Hellbent, it, whereas I guess Battle of Ranskor Av Kolos, I, I guess it's like sturdy enough as a script. It's just fucking lame. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Hellbent ha is riddled with holes and problems and bad dialogue and just shit mm. the one thing that I was thinking about because most of Battle of Ryan's Co of Colos is just really like poor filler but there's one mm -hmm. element of it that I think is like bordering on a bit of bad character drama and it's the fact that despite um, Graham and Ryan's sort of, you know, moment at the end of it takes you away, in this story he's on a sort of mission to kill Tim Shaw. And I feel like that might be a bit forced in terms of Graham's character, because up to this point we'd never really seen him have that kind of aggression. So I'm, not, I'm a little bit unsure I, about that. If I had to compare Battle of Ranscore, Av, Kolos, and Hellbent to people... Hellbent would be like Callum. <laughs> and do I make a Mason joke or do I not make a Mason joke for Battle of Ranscor Av Kolos? I think I mean, I've already I, called him out. I think Mason's a nicer <laughs> guy. I'm just, I'm just fucking around. They um no. Do you want me to make a guess? Um Hmm. Hellbent is like Hitler. Battle of Ranskarev Kolos is like Stalin. <laughs> well, not Stalin. I was thinking like who's the most boring uh, politician ever, and that you would know. I don't know. Fucking Woodrow Wilson. Uh... <laughs> someone that people. Pe someone of that people United just States like forget. World I don't know. Woodrow Wilson. And no idea. Um, Woodrow Wilson was a boring motherfucker. <laughs> um, it's just like, like that guy did not do shit. I don't know. Battle of Ranskar Collis is sludge, but it's. I don't. I don't. I don't hate it like I hate Hell Ben. It's just. It's just a misfire, really. It's just a sort of bland s series end to the blandest series. Like it's just this sort of Tim Shaw returns and it's there's yeah. there's no there's no fanfare. It's really dull. Ooh, big Eddie. toothy coochie. Yeah, our and boy. Th and there's like shots of there's shots of Tim Shaw turning his head and trying to be a badass like DC villain. <laughs> um, the Doctor he has is a deep voice. Yeah, uh, the the Doctor is quirky and says a lot of exposition as does Yaz. They are. There is actually something I really don't like about it. It rips off the pirate planet and it rips off Journey's End as well. I'm interested because you did this for um... I can't remember who it is. What we did. Suranga Conundrum last time I was on. Mm. Um, the you said that each of these stories that we're defending comes from someone who said, ah, defend this against Hellbent. I think it's worse than Hellbent. I want to know what the person who recommended Battle of Ranskor Av Kolos as being worse than Hellbent said about Battle of Ranskor Av Kolos. Uh, they said Hellbent looks like it actually had effort put into it, whereas Battle of Ranskor Av Kolos is like the most phoned-in story of all time. Which they're not wrong, but I don't think that's necessarily. They're a reason. not wrong. That's that's not necessarily a reason for it being better or worse in terms of execution. I think that's just, that's just yeah, kind of what happened backstage. Twin Dilemma looks brilliant next to Destiny of the Daleks, but I'd say Twin Dilemma is shit compared to Destiny of the Daleks. You know what I'm saying? Well, I haven't seen Twin Dilemma yet. That's in the series. Oh, uh, what about Time and the Rani? I haven't seen that either. 
give me a sh story that you think is shitter than Destiny of the Daleks, but looks better than Destiny of the Daleks. Android Invasion. There you go. Um, yeah, because actually, to be yeah. fair, the, the production values on the Android Invasion are actually quite good. And, like, the stunts are really good yeah. in that. Like, that bit where the Doctor jumps there off the go. building, I love that. That is so cool. There you go. That's that's the defense. The look <laughs> of a story does not determine whether or not it is actually good or not. Oh, actually, no, to be fair, they weren't just talking about production values. They were talking about the script. Like, they believe that Moffat put his heart and soul into Hellbent, uh, Hellbent's story, whereas they <sighs> believe that Chibnall's, like, Battle of Ransgrave Colossus was just, like, minimal effort. Nah... Nah, I, uh, I don't know if I agree with that take. I think they're mm. both pretty phoned in. I think, because yeah. Moffat seems to do this thing that I do a lot of the time when I'm writing, and that's why I don't really have any fanfic projects going on right now, is because everything I write gets sort of really too complicated, and then I can't figure out how to end it. And I sort of just give up. Hellbent feels like Moffat gave up. He was just like, fuck it. I gotta end it somehow. That's what Hellbent feels like. Well, he... Battle of Ranscor of Kolos, on the other hand, feels like Chibnall thought it was a really good idea. And it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, because he's just like a sort of lame Gen X boomer. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. And he thinks that, like, Doctor Who is this really simple show for children. And it's really not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's just... Uh, Battle of Ranscrove Colors, I think, at its heart, is just a, ge a generic bad. It's not, like, a really horrible... But it's just in terms of entertainment value, I think it comes across much worse than it actually is, just because it's so dull. It doesn't... Like I said, other than the fact that it, like, riffs from other stuff, it mm. doesn't really have it's just kind of, It's just kind of like... Like, the, the script sort of is just like, sound It's enough. just a sort of, there like, homogenization there aren't really, of stories, isn't it? There aren't really any plot holes in Battle of Ranskorav Kolos. It's just sort of I can't remember. And I can't remember if there is or not. I haven't seen it since a broadcast, so I have to rewatch it. I just remember being bored by it as all. Well. Yeah. You, Whereas, you know what's weird? Actively made me. It's mad. so weird. In the Battle of Ranskor of Colas, there's a bit where the world almost ends, and I keep, I always forget about that. Yeah. But it, it just it just felt like a. Prove how it just boring like, it is. It just had all the like surface level elements of what like box ticking in a finale, but it had none of the substance, and I think that's the issue. Like the only substance that was there was Graham was like, I need to have revenge for Grace's death. And in the end, he's like, actually, no, I'm not going to. And then he fist bumps Ryan, and it's cringe. That's all. I think he should have shot Tim Shaw. That's what I think. Well, you are an American, after all. I would have gone that route. I would have made it... I would have done the character drama thing that he cock-teased us with. It's like... I feel like Chibnall just doesn't have the balls to do certain things that I would have the balls to do. I, he's just such a passive... I he's, it's weird, because he's such a passive writer, even when he's doing ambitious things like The Timeless Child. It's he's like, just such a passive it's like writer he has, in execution. He has really good ideas, and then he won't let himself go through with them. They just, yeah, the they're, just, they're really scared, and they just come out like a wet fart. As a finale, I think the Battle of Ranskarev Kolos, to some extent... It does kind of succeed in its mission statement, but the problem is the mission statement itself is really boring. Uh, whereas with Hellbent, it directly ruins previous episodes that were actually giving some really good potential, like Heaven Sent, for example. Like, that really set up some proper potential for storytelling, but and it just kind of shits on it. Whereas Battle of Ranscribe Kolos just kind of does the same boring shit that Series 11 was already doing, and it, it's kind of consistent with that, if you know what I mean. But yeah, the Battle of Ranscribe Kolos is, is, is below average. It's pretty bad. But I don't think it's as bad as Hellbent. I don't think it, it's as damaging. It doesn't have enough energy to damage its, the series as Hellbent does. It's just another stale Series 11 Chris Chibnall episode. That's all it is to me. I think Chibnall has really good ideas, then doesn't execute them properly. 
is too scared to execute them properly. And the Battle of Ranskorav Kolos is an example of that. It's an example of Chibnall at his extreme, whereas mm. Hellbent is an example of Moffat's problems with writings, where he has a fuck ton of really good ideas, throws them all into a blender, and then can't quite piece them how together how, figure out how to piece them together and so he just ends up giving up and g- giving the audience this tangled mess of bullshit yeah Moffat is an ADHD writer whereas Chris Chibnall's like one of those like zen monks that drinks green tea <laughs> Ch- Chibnall's just like oh here's a here's a really 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 good idea but I'm afraid it'll piss people off if I go through with it all the way so I'm and just so gonna. So he doesn't ju- go through with it, it all the way. Yeah. And it ends up pissing people off anyway. So he's just. He's, it's just like this undercooked anti story. Whereas with Moffat, it's an overcooked fucking disaster. <laughs> what we need is someone in the middle. Russell T. Davies. Who can cook things just right. Russell T. Davies. Big gay Welshman. There you go. Is the perfect movie I, showrunner. And I will hear no. I concur. No arguments against it. <laughs> I concur. Indeed. Because wh- I, I went through a phase where I was like, God, I really hate the RTD era. I realized that was Dylan talking through me. And then I rewatched the Tenant era, and I was like, shit, Tenant's like the sixth Doctor in my top Doctor's ranking. That's valid, man. That's valid. He's a charming lad, and his, his character good, arc is much good... more intentional than people think. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. So, anything else you want to say before we uh, end this video, Brian? Um, Still hate Tom Vance. He's a creepy dick. But we love love Mason, though, don't we? I just want to make that clear, because, like, I, I, (laughs) I haven't had very much of a platform to, you know, get my opinion out there on that, get put my two cents in. Yeah, so you think Tom that my you think a fucking prick. So you think my channel is more of a mm-hmm. platform than your Twitter? <laughs> uh yeah, nobody looks at my Twitter. Okay. Rip. And also like I I think I made a tweet. I was like fuck you Tom Vance and that was it. But that, I just need to make sure everybody who watches our little in group of Doctor Who YouTubers knows that I I fucking despise Tom Vance. Yeah. So, and also, like, on a totally different and unrelated topic, Mason, you're a good cunt and I love you. And that's how I'm choosing to call you out this time around. We stand McDonald Man. We do stand McDonald Man. And that is a great little jingle to crack at the end of this video. Thank you all for watching, Brian. Thank you for coming on. Um,. I believe the next time you'll be on might be Terminus. I think it's Terminus. <gasps> I love Terminus. <laughs> it's 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 so fun. <laughs> you're you're just about one of the only people I know that does. <laughs> well, because here's the thing: a lot of people do, like nobody likes Terminus. There isn't one person I have met who likes Terminus, but also nobody thinks it's so bad it's fun. I'm the only person I know who thinks it's so bad it's fun. <laughs> yeah, so the next one you'll be on is Terminus. Um, so I'm <laughs> looking forward to that. I actually am a massive fan of Mordred Undead and Enlightenment, so I'm interested to see where the middle of the Black Guardian trilogy is um, in terms of that. So we'll have to wait and what's, see. What's the next one you're doing after Destiny of the Daleks, though? Well, I've actually already filmed it, but um, the next coming oh. out for the audience is Horns of Nyman with Dylan, but I've already filmed that one. In terms of the next one that I'm filming, okay. though, will be Four to Doomsday with Matt of Universals. Hmm. All right. That'll be interesting. You've yes. never seen Four to Doomsday. No, I haven't, and I know that James Goss is a big fan of it. So. We'll oh see. my God! I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for your loss. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, no, I, I, look, I'm going to go to it with an open mind and we'll see what happens. Good. I've heard things, some things about what Adric says in it, but we'll go into an open mind and see what happens. 
<laughs> it's so clever. You don't know. <laughs> All right then. Thanks for joining for Destiny of the Daleks. We'll see you all next time no for the problem. Horns of Naimon. Bye bye. bye.